Our next inductee hurdled his way to the Southwest Conference record books, a four-time Southwest Conference champion, an All-American and an NCAA champion as well. He later worked his way through the athletic department, eventually becoming athletic director of one of the most respected universities around, and he became a huge university leader, representing the Rice Owls. Please welcome Bobby May. Bobby, you're overdue. Uh, we're glad to have you here. And uh, growing up in Dallas, how did you end up at Rice? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of a long story. Uh, growing up in Dallas, I really thought I wanted to go to SMU. Uh, I worked out over there uh, with a guy named Bobby Johnson uh, who ran for uh, McAdoo Keaton. And used to go over there with uh, my friends and shoot pool and just kind of hang out on the SMU campus. And the problem was uh, SMU didn't offer me a scholarship. Ouch. So uh, my choice came down to Rice. Uh, and uh, I can thank Augie Earp for that. He was uh, the assistant coach and did all the recruiting. And uh, he and Emmett Brunson ran the program. And, and uh, it turned out to be a really good choice for me. Yeah, obviously, uh, all's well that ends well. You were associated with some true track legends in Southwest Conference history. Talk a little bit about Emmett Brunson and guys like Fred Walcott and Fred Hansen. Well, there's, there's some great ones right there. They're all uh, have Olympic connections. Uh, Fred Hansen was uh, a gold medalist uh, in Tokyo. Uh, that year, we had uh, three guys to make the Olympic trials. Two of the three made the Olympic team. The other guy was Ed Red, who threw the javelin. So a lot of quality right there in a very small school. But uh, Fred was uh, an interesting character. We, we used to uh, travel a lot together. And, uh, you know, he was a handsome guy and, and uh, well-spoken and famous. People wanted to have his autograph. And unfortunately, I guess I resembled him a little bit because they would come up to me and ask me for his autograph, thinking I was Fred Hansen. So after a while, I got kind of tired of it. And uh, so if you have a Fred Hansen autograph, you should check the authenticity. <laughs> That's awesome. Tell us about the Southwest Conference meet and then participating in the NCAA championships in 1964. Well, the Southwest Conference was... Uh, the, the be all and end all for me uh, growing up in Dallas. I knew I was going to go to the Southwest Conference somewhere. Uh, winning the conference as a team was very important to me. We won it in 64 and 65. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to win the NCAA in 64 and Eugene. And it, I mean, it's just fun to win. You know, we had a group of guys, some of them are here today that, that were on that same team. And by the way, I want to thank everybody that came up from Houston, uh, former staff members former athletes, uh, some, some guys from my neighborhood at Bentwater. So thanks a lot for coming. I really appreciate you being here. That's awesome. And, and I'd have to think that when you win back-to-back -back championships at Rice in any sport, you feel pretty good. I mean, you know, even in those days, it wasn't a given that Rice was going to be the powerhouse uh, in track, obviously. No, but I tell you, my freshman year, one of the reasons that all happened was that Neely and Brunson – got together and decided that they needed to, to make something happen with the track program. So when I came in as a freshman, there were like 20 freshmen that came in for track that one year. Wow. So their plan was to, to win championships. And of course, 64 and 65, that happened. But back in, back in the day, Rice didn't charge tuition, so it wasn't so much of a financial issue. And uh, Augie was a tremendous coach, tremendous recruiter, as was Brunson. And uh, the combination sort of make it, made it all work. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and then you have a unique perspective as a former athlete of the Southwest Conference, but also as an athletic director. Um, what made the Southwest Conference such a special conference? Well, you know, the, the diversity, you know, they had the big schools and the small schools, the privates and the publics. 
And at that time, back in the 60s, and I'm sure before, it was, it was kind of a family. You know, the big guys looked after the little guys, and it, it, was, a, it was a good mix. And as I said earlier, I think growing up in Dallas, you, you were going to go to a Southwest Conference school just because that was where you wanted to be. It's just a question of which school you chose. And it, it just it just was a great league, uh, great the, the the conference matched up with anybody, and uh, being a winner at uh, in that conference at one of those schools was was really special. I guess being a part of administration, then it was probably tough for you to watch it. Uh, and again, everything changes; it's still changing as far as the collegiate landscape. But it was probably tough to watch this thing um, kind of dissolve as it did. No, it was, and unfortunately, I was the athletic director at the time. It solved and uh, it was uh, it was a kind of a shock because no one expected it to happen exactly the way it happened uh, we went home uh, from a meeting on Friday and found out on uh, thinking we were we were okay you know one team from Houston one team from Dallas found out on Monday that we weren't uh, included so uh, we had to start looking for a home and uh, we did that and Found a pretty good one in the WAC, and yeah. uh, where we won our national championship in baseball, and it was a, a good home for us. Yeah, and you know, a couple of people that have been up here have already mentioned the fondness that th they have, the memories that they have of the Southwest Conference, and uh, it is great, I think, to remember it like this, isn't it, Bob? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm thrilled that they established this wing in the Texas Sports Hall of Fame to to make uh, the memories last for the Southwest Conference because it, it was really special, a lot of special people. Uh, it, it needs to be remembered. It's too bad it, it had to go away. But like you said, uh, times change. And uh, yeah, I guess it was inevitable given all that happened towards the end of uh, the middle 80s and, and the, uh, the financial considerations that made it uh, a little bit of a different ball game for the privates versus the public schools. So it was uh, unfortunate, but probably inevitable, unless things could have changed dramatically along the way, and they didn't change. No. Obviously, as the athletic director, you were a fan of every sport. When you were an athlete, were you a fan of the other sports within the Southwest Conference and the other athletes within your university? Oh, absolutely. You know, as an athletic director, you better be a fan of all the sports. Right, exactly. You know? uh, as, a, as an athlete, I, I really wanted to play basketball. But there again, nobody offered me a scholarship. So uh, come on, people. Yeah, really. Uh, but anyway, it worked out. It worked out real well going to Rice. Yeah, awesome. Well, it worked out real well to have you here today, Bobby. We appreciate it very much. Okay, thank Congratulations, you, Hall of Famer Bobby May from Rice University.